Well, hello there, everybody. It's Grandpa Scott, and I'm back today with another story and hopefully a great adventure, too. This book's a little different for Grandpa Scott. I haven't read one quite like this before to you guys, but today, well, let's see how it goes. You're probably wondering what it's all about. Well, so am I, but we're going to take a look at it. It's called The Old Black Witch. I don't know if that's supposed to be scary or if that's supposed to be funny, but we're going to read it if that's okay with you. Yeah, let's do that. All right, here we go. The Old Black Witch. Nicky and his mother made a long trip to New England. They didn't have much money and they wanted to buy an old house and turn it into a tea room. Nicky's mother had in mind a special kind of home. I wonder what that would be like. For the tea room, she thought it should be old and warm and cozy. They looked and looked for such a house. At last, they found a man who said he had just the right house for their tea room. He said it was an old, warm, and cozy. He really thought it was old, broken down, and dreadful. Nicky and his mother were too tired to even think. They bought the house. When all the papers were signed, they went to the house. Nicky's mother opened the squeaky old door with a rusty key. The sun had grown, gone down, and the house was dark and chilly. Nicky began to build a fire in the big fireplace. The fire did not start very easily, and puffs of smoke soon filled the room. Oh my, look at that room filling up with smoke. Suddenly, squawk, thump, and down from the chimney fell a big black mess. It was all covered with cobwebs and made a terrible sound. Terrible sounds. It stumbled out of the fireplace and into the room. From its long pointed hat to its long pointed shoes, it was covered with ashes. It was a fright. It was furious. And it was an old black witch. Oh boy. Old black witch glared into Nikki's face. Who told you to build a fire in my fireplace? She shouted, stomping around and shaking her broom. Jumping Jehoshaphat. You've scorched my blasted broomstick. This is our fireplace and our home because we bought it, Nicky said politely. And what are you doing in our chimney? The old black witch expected to see the boy scream and fright and climb into the, the closest curtain. Now she looked hard into Nicky's face. She pointed a long crooked finger at the tip of, of Nicky's nose. What's she trying to do anyway? Boy, she croaked, this is my chimney, my fireplace, and my house. She looked at her watch. Giblet, she screeched. I have been asleep for 100 years. Now, you just skedaddle. This is my house. Scoot, boo, scat, run. Nikki's mother, who could hardly believe what she saw, now spoke to the old black witch. We bought this house to make a warm, cozy little tea room with red checkered curtains, bunches of sweet William on the tables, and homemade biscuits with honey. And blueberry pancakes, added Nicky. Bats, screamed the old black witch, over my dead body. This house must have been in cobwebs in the corners and the curtains, some old toad in the fireplace and three inches of dust on the floor. The old black witch cracked her knuckles, popped her eyes, and made awful noises. Nonsense, Nicky's mother answered calmly. Then what will become of me, muttered the old black witch. There ain't many old broken down houses left, you know. Well, if you'd really like to stay, you may have a room in the attic, said Nicky's mother. The old black witch grumbled all the way up to the attic, but after some banging, banging around, she settled down in the little room under the rafters. Oddly enough, this little room pleased the old black witch. Cobwebs hung heavy with dust, and a family of squeaky bats nested near the roof. There, the wind blew, and the shutters bumped, and the old beams made spooky music. She would have, like, some pets, such as a few spotted toads. Yes, yeah, she thought a couple of spotted toads would suit her nicely. Downstairs, Nicky and his mother began to work hard fixing up the old house, cleaning and scrubbing and painting and polishing, and it went on for weeks. The old black witch wasn't much help. 
She switched around and she scratched the old broom, flitting from stair post to the corner of the cupboard, shrieking and cracking and making rude comments about all the things that were going. One evening, she sailed through a window so sparkling clean that she thought it was open and crashed with an ear splitting. It was a clap of thunder and it was very noisy. The old witch was hopping mad. She zoomed back in to the room and kicked over a... What did she kick over? She kicked over a bucket of suds and shook the glass out of her broom over the clean floor. This old witch is really... Uh, she's a case, isn't she? When Nikki scolded her for half an hour, the old black witch just pulled her long pointed hat over her long pointed nose and pretended she was asleep. Finally, in spite of the old black witch, the tea room was ready, just as it had been planned. There were red checkered curtains, there were bunches of sweet William on the tables, the homemade biscuits were delicious, and the blueberry pancakes were the best for miles around. Do you like blueberry pancakes? Grandpa Stark does. From the very beginning, the jug and muffin tea room was a success. Although people had heard that the house was haunted by an old black witch, no one believed such nonsense. Yet, they wondered who it was that shouted down from the attic window, Boo! Scat! Rabbitat Fred! At all the ladies who came to see the clever new tea room, they all waved back at the old black witch and said, How quaint! And how sweet! One day, Nikki's mother went upstairs and knocked on the old witch's door. Dear Black Witch, there is an awful big crowd downstairs, and I need help with the pancakes. Nikki's mother looked very tired. Could you stir a little? said the old Black Witch. I have been a hundred years since she had cooked, and she soon found herself in the kitchen a nice clean apron and a lot of eggs and flour and blueberries. Then, with a pinch of this and a pinch of that, the old black witch blueberry pancakes were simply wonderful. Who would ever have guessed? Before long, Nikki's mother let her serve some pancakes when the customers stared at the old black witch, asked them, What's the matter, dearie? Is my slip showing? Sometimes she cracked, Don't worry, I made them myself. That's why some people worried, but they had to admit the pancakes were marvelous. The old black witch was beginning to enjoy all the attention. Soon she began singing in her crackled voice as she put the pancakes on the tables. Sometimes she sang, Boil cauldron, make a brew. What kind of berries makes pancakes blue? Or she would say, Boil and bubble, dance a jig. If you eat all these, you're a polka dot pig. Or sometimes she even said, Snakes and snails and gophers knees. If you think they're bad, then just taste these. Oh my, she was quite the singer and You'd think it would scare everybody away. Not all the people who heard about the jug and muffin tea room were nice, quiet ladies. Uh-oh, who are these guys over here? They don't look like they're coming for tea, do they? Stories of the famous tea room reached the ears of two greedy thieves who decided to pay a visit to the old house. They made very careful plans. They put on their sneakiest sneakers and with a final shh, they made their way through the dark. The night was blue with a great lemon moon peeking through the trees. And it was the old black witch who heard them. She tipped down from the attic in the light of the great lemon moon and she saw the thieves shaking money from the sugar bowl into a bag. Her face wrinkled into a smile and her eyes glowed in the corner where she hid. The old black witch knew evil and believed in to point. These were her kind of people. She was about to crackle. Go to it, boys! Then she realized they were stealing from her. After all, 
her blueberry pancakes had made the money in the sugar bowl, suddenly fury made her hop up and down. She banged on the floor with her broom. The greedy thieves were startled and frightened until they saw the old black witch was really quite tiny. They picked her up and spun, sputtering and kicking, and stuffed her in an almost empty flour barrel. Then they went back to their stealing. However, the two thieves did not see the lid of the barrel rise. They did not hear the old black witch whisper three magic words. They did not see her eyes cross twice, and uh, suddenly a puff of smoke. What's going to happen to the thieves? Any ideas? I got a couple. Here they are. But the thieves suddenly disappeared. Where they had been, two green and brown toads blinked at each other in the moonlight. What did she do? She turned them into toads, didn't she? In a twinkling, the old black witch scooped them up in her apron and, and popped them into a wooden cage. From then on, the old black witch had two strange spotted toads in her room. Things went along very well for everyone after that. The old black witch helped quite often in the tea room. She demanded days off, which to be nasty, but then most witches would. Nikki's mother no longer looked tired. Nikki grew rosy in the country air. The old black witch often told stories to Nikki about the bad old days. But I know that you're really a good witch. Ha <laughs> ha. He would say, look at her fondly. Then the old black witch would look out the window, crack her knuckles, wink at the crusty crow that lived in the mulberry tree. Bats, she would say. Bats, crickets, and snakes, and knees. Well, that is quite an end to the story of the old black witch. Here she was, kind of ornery and mean and nasty, and Nicky and his mom made a place for her to stay and enjoy her time that she could be a help and be kind to people. And then she also protected Nick and his mom from the thieves and turned them into toads. And she even had those toads that she always wanted. Well, we can be that way too. Sometimes people don't make us feel right. Maybe they say things or act a certain way, but maybe we should just give them, well, it's called grace. Give them some kindness and understanding and they just might turn out to be one of your best friends it's worth a try isn't it well grandpa scott thinks so so the story might be done but you know now's the time to go outside and have some fun because this old black witch woo, she's all done